Hello people of YouTube, it's Deephack here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.2 and Heatbler Simulations AGS 37 Begin Module. Welcome to Tutorial 14, Mark 71 General Purpose Bomb RR Mode. Today we take a little look at the final of the Master Bomb Modes in the Vigan. this one labelled RR, which stands for Radar Release. Uh, these modes are specially designed for use in low visibility conditions, so you can drop bombs referencing only the radar. Alternatively, it has uh, well, it has three submodes, the first of which is the radar release mode. The other two are based on radar fixes, and they can either be a level drop or a toss bombing drop. And of course, in the case of the toss bombing, that's uh, the ability to basically toss bombs, you know, to, to release bombs while you're in a pull-up manoeuvre, thus meaning that you don't have to overfly the target. This is very useful in cases where the target might have good air defence and you don't want to fly right over the top. Uh, with toss bombing, you can drop your weapons about five kilometres from the target. So, um, yeah, we've already covered Plan and DYK. Today it's all of the sub-modes of RR. If we take a little look in the cockpit... And uh, just take a little look at the, the weapon selector here. Um, as always, the inner ring is for bombing modes. If we bring this around here, we've already covered plan, we've covered DYK, and today is RR. So first step is to put uh, the selector into the RR mode. As I mentioned, there are three sub-modes uh, to, to RR, and these are radar, navigation drop, or toss bombing. Uh, the radar is the, the main mode, and if you have the system, the selector in RR mode, and you put the aircraft into master mode attack, you will get radar drop, which means that we basically use the radar to define a target to drop against. Nav mode will do a level drop against the current uh, waypoint, the current target fix. So of course you need to ensure that that target fix is very, very accurate. Uh, either ensure that your nav system has already been updated, or refine the target fix using the radar cursor before your drop. Toss bombing also uses the target fix location, uh, and it's also done from nav master mode. However, it's automatically engaged if you're at greater than five degrees pitch up when you unsafe the trigger, uh, and then you continue to hold the weapon trigger as you do a 4G pull up. Uh, and you're going to want to do that at around about 4.8 or 5 kilometers uh, and traveling at Mach 0.9. The manual states that um, you can do this type of attack, the toss attack that is, at Mach 0 0.8, 0 0.85 or 0.9, and it gives a variety of ranges. Uh, I found if you're just under uh, 5 kilometers and you're traveling at Mach 0 0.9, it kind of just works. Um, well, it just works. It's of course quite inaccurate. Anyway, I will demonstrate all three of these sub-modes of RR, one after another. These work with both the high drag and the low drag versions of the Mark 71. We're first going to do a radar attack. Now, technically, for radar attack, you don't need any target fix location at all. You just uh, locate your target on the radar. You put um, it, it gives you a special uh, target attack line. You put that on the target and pull and hold the trigger, and then you'd wait. Uh, obviously, maintain, maintaining your course towards the target. However, of course, as always, these things are much easier if you have uh, a target fix to reference. So, uh, I'm going to take uh, B2. So, if I enter code into Tactical Niner, B2, I've now defined B2 as a target fix. If I zoom out a little bit, you'll see we currently have B1. I'll press B2, I get M2, confirming that that's my current target location. So, uh, we have our R mode selected on the weapon selector. Um, let's actually go for... Let's go for something like 20 meters separation and series release. As always, you can release an impulse and drop a single bomb. Uh, as I've mentioned in the previous tutorials, I don't think there's any point in doing that. Uh, and then for HUD symbology, we want the HUD in the lower position. Oops, the lever. Uh, we want F slave mode, and we're going to use RHM for height source, which is radar altimeter. Uh, I know the target is at a QFE of 1010, so I set that on the altimeter now. And then down on the left, um, actually, the, the next thing that we'll do is actually just continue inbound for now, uh, and I'll show you the symbology. So if we come out of active pause, we're going to rotate master mode into attack. That immediately turns on the radar. 
and I'm going to adjust the radar range down. Actually, let's put the thing into active pause for a moment. I'm going to adjust the radar range down. You want it all the way down at 15 kilometers. Uh, and as we continue inbound, we're going to get symbology. So you can see master mode ANF, uh, and we've got the radar on. Uh, let's actually bring the bring the radar brightness down a little bit, uh, and we can then adjust marker as we continue inbound. I'm going to unpause now, and I'm also going to put the radar into A1 position. Okay, and now we get the actual aiming symbology. So let's uh, let's zoom down a little bit and you'll see what I'm talking about here. We obviously have our course line here. We need to align this with our target and then we have this little target, uh, target line here. That's at three kilometers from us. The way the system works is really simple. Uh, once we're approaching the target, we will unsafe our trigger. That doesn't actually change any of the symbology. We then simply fly to place this cursor on the target, whatever that target feature may be that we're seeing on the radar. As soon as this is placed on the target, we're going to pull and hold the weapon's release trigger. While we're doing that, we'll continue to fly straight and level and aligned with the target, and the weapons will come off automatically. There's nothing more we need to do. We'll get the standard uh, range indication line on the HUD. It'll flash two seconds before release, and then we'll get the filled last red light uh, here in the cockpit once all weapons are away. So it's that simple. Uh, so with that in mind, let's continue inbound. Now, it's of course, when you're looking through the HUD, really hard to see this target line. Um, so we're gonna do our best, oops, we're gonna do our best, but this, this can be a little bit difficult. As I said, the benefit of this mode uh, is that we can indeed drop weapons in visibility. Um, so you know, even if I couldn't see out, <laughs> basically if I couldn't see anything out the cockpit, I could still drop using this mode. So I'm going to use the the target fix uh, indication on the HUD to align myself, and of course I want to fly straight and level towards the target. I'm going to go zone one on the afterburner. That'll just make everything a little easier. And I'm waiting until the target approaches uh, that target line at three meters. Let's try and do this as accurately as possible. So trigger on safe. I'm now ready. for it to pass into that line on the HUD. Almost. Now, pulling and holding the trigger. Build last. Weapons are away. Okay, here we go. Pause that. Okay, not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, that was pretty much on target. I, I actually, I aimed a little bit late. It took me a couple of moments to, to recognize that I was actually in range. So, a uh, trigger unsafe, radar off, and master mode back to nav, and then you can continue your flight plan. So that's the, the radar sub mode for uh, radar release. Uh, I'll reset the simulation and we'll now do the nav mode. Okay, I've reset the simulation and we're back in the cockpit. Let's do the setup for the RR nav release. So uh, we're gonna make sure that the selector is in RR position. Uh, again, I'm going to select 20 meters uh, interval. I've got the release mode in series. Um, for this mode, we absolutely must have the target fix. So because of that, I'm gonna put the computer into tactical input, enter code nine and choose waypoint two. That's me defined waypoint 2 as my target. I now select waypoint 2, and it confirms M2 and a distance. Uh, this is what we have to do in order for this mode to work. Uh, I will then also ensure that QFE is set, 1010. Uh, slave mode is to F, RHM for there. And I need to leave the system in nav mode this time, and I don't need the radar on. This, this particular sub mode does not use the radar at all. So now... All I have to do is continue inbound. I'm actually going to accelerate a little bit and get myself down to a lower altitude. So we're going to continue inbound towards the target. At about 10 kilometers, I'm going to set the trigger unsafe. And at that stage, we will get the standard range indications on the HUD that we always do. So here we go. Off we go. So I'm just aligning 
my flight path marker with the dot on the horizon line in the HUD. And I need to do that the whole way in. That's uh, that's basically the only accuracy that I've got here, is, is flying this as well as I can. Let's see what we get. Okay, 10 kilometers. Trigger is now unsafe. And we continue. I'm waiting for those range indications to appear in the HUD. Range indication is there, waiting for it to shrink, and then it'll flash two seconds before release. Two seconds. I pull and hold the trigger. Failed last, weapons are away. Let's see if we manage an accurate drop here. Not bad, not bad. Um, my my navigational system was fairly well aligned at that time, uh, simply because I just started the simulation, so that was actually quite effective. It trigger goes back to safe, uh, and then we can continue our flight plan as normal. Fantastic. Uh, so yeah, three vehicles destroyed. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. Okay, let's uh, reset the simulation again, and we'll now go for the most difficult mode. Okay, we're back in the cockpit, and I've reset the simulation. Let's try TOS submode of RR, the most difficult mode to get accurate. Uh, so again, we move the weapon selector into the RR position. I'm actually going to choose a longer interval this time of 25 meters, again because TOS bombing is quite inaccurate. Uh, this mode doesn't use the radar, just like the nav uh, submode, it requires a target fix location. So again, let's put the computer into tactical and input mode and enter code 9 and choose waypoint B2. That's where our uh, target point is. Back to output, back to actual position and choose B2. That's confirmed here, M2 and a distance. Uh, we're then going to ensure that we set QFE for the target area, 1010, slave mode to F and that in fact is all the setup done. Uh, we need to keep the aircraft in nav mode for this release, and the way that the system differentiates between the, the nav sub-mode and the TOS sub-mode is that in TOS sub-mode you have to do a 4G pull-up at your preset distance and unsafe the trigger with more than 5 degrees nose-up pitch. Um, so basically we're going to fly at um, the profile which requires max 0.9, we're going to wait until we're just under 5 kilometers, and then we're going to do a 4G pull-up. During that 4G pull-up, we're going to unsafe the trigger at greater than 5 degrees nose up, and then we're going to pull and hold the weapon's release trigger, and the bombs will automatically come off at the correct time, uh, usually between 12 and 15 degrees nose up. All of this happens very, very quickly. It's quite difficult to do it, and it's also a bit inaccurate. So bear with me. Let's see how we go. I've taken active pause off, I'm going to go full afterburner, and uh, we're looking for Mach 0.9. This is all going to happen very quickly. And as I said, once I get my distance down to about 5 kilometers, I will then begin my pull-up, unsafe the trigger at more than 5 degrees nose up, and then I'll pull and hold when it's release. Let's see if we can do this. Okay, approaching 0.9. Going to come into zone 2, back to zone 1 now. That looks about right. Yeah, that looks about right. Let's try and maintain this nicely. Range is coming down. Approaching 5 kilometers. We're at 5 kilometers now, pulling up. Unsafe. Pulling the trigger. Fold last. Okay, so, you can see we actually get quite an arc on these bombs here. Uh, they are travelling much further than they would normally. Let's see if we actually get these anywhere near the target. Uh, it looks like a bit short. Oh wow, okay. The last couple though, even though I was short, I did get hits and I did actually damage these targets. That's, uh, that's pretty good, that's pretty good. That's sort of what we expected. Uh, that's sort of what we expected, because, um, yeah, toss bombing is inaccurate. Still, destroyed two vehicles, and I'm pretty sure I damaged another one too. So, nice. That'll do. That'll do. 
So, uh, trigger unsafe, and then we're back in normal nav mode. We can continue our flight. So, that was a demonstration of RR uh, master mode, which is radar release. Uh, and I demonstrated all three of those submodes, radar, nav, and toss. Radar mode is active if you have the aircraft in attack master mode, and it uses the radar in order to do a, a radar-assisted bomb drop. Uh, nav mode requires you to be in nav mode, and to have a target fixed location that you currently have selected, you then simply follow the HUD indications and pull and hold the trigger at the correct time. Toss bomb mode, which I just demonstrated there, is also done from nav uh, master mode, requires a target fix, and it requires you to unsafe the trigger when already more than 5 degrees goes up and at the correct distance from the target for your toss profile. Uh, my demonstrated one was Mach 0 0.9 and just under 5 kilometers. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. You also have the option of further supporting the, the channel by joining Deep Hacks Ground Crew for a small monthly fee by clicking the join button below. Thank you very much, those of you who've already done so. Your names are appearing on screen now. Uh, there are some small benefits, other than just knowing that you're supporting me in creating this content. Uh, you get to join Deep Hacks Ground Crew Discord, where we all interact with each other. And we also, on a kind of semi-regular basis, we do some flying uh, together as well in DCS. So thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.